Okay, so I'm recording here. So it's our session on a gasifier burner with a power cube with Dan Hartman and Marchin. We're going to get a little lesson on the, the 3D CAD using Blender. So we've got the design in Blender right now. And here's a 101 on how to operate within Blender. Just a few things about how to navigate with our design. Dan, take it away. All right, so... This is so uh, when you open up the... the power links, the yeah. power group. Power cube is over here. Can you see my mouse arrow? Um, let's see, where's your arrow? Yeah, I, I see your arrow. It's small, yep. I could see it. All right, so over here on the right-hand side uh -huh. is, is this pane that's called... Um, I think that's called the... Uh, Scene? The outliner. Yeah, the outliner here shows the hierarchy of all the objects. So then down here we have this empty object and it's parenting these power cube groups. And these symbols here mm -hmm. are um, indicating that that's a link to a file. Okay. So the concept is here, uh, basically in this file right now, we're using two Blender files that are just in the same director, meaning like they're both, like when I'm opening it up right here, it's on my desktop, I've got the the gasifier file and the power cube file, which are two separate ones. The, the power cube file is being called by the, by this here, the gasifier.blend. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's right. So that's the, this, this view is what kind of view here? Because there's different views in, in Blender. Yeah, we can go to the um, quad view, which does that. Let's see, and the views are, where are the views now? To access the different views, where is that button? Down in the lower left. Okay, lower left view, I see it, uh-huh. So select... You can toggle the quad view. Toggle the quad view, okay. And quad yeah, view so gets now us... We're just in hmm. regular view. Or we can do toggle quad view. Uh-huh. And quad view, you like to see what? The different uh, XYZ directions? Yeah. You got top ortho, front ortho, uh -huh. right ortho, and user perspective. Toggle full screen. Wait, let's see. Um, under view, it says toggle quad view. When I toggle out of it, it gets me into one, just one direction. Looking at it from one direction. How do I get back to the original view there? Just press um, toggle quad view again. And in Blender, you notice how on the right-hand side of these menus, uh -huh. see where my arrow is pointing? Mm -hmm. Are the keyboard shortcuts. Right. So when I'm, I'm having an issue here, when I go, when I toggle between, I go toggle quad view, I go into a one front ortho view instead of a, the normal view that you have. Why is it taking me to front ortho? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Is there a way to reset reset it? Um, hmm. If you go to regular view, like this. Yeah, right. That's you regular. Can say, um, perspective or so and then say top uh-huh so somehow I toggle or the right or left okay um, let's see so now how to how to rotate things so I'm viewing from let's see how do I tell which view it is um, Does it say what view it is? 
Oh, you to rotate the view. Yeah. You press the the wheel and drag your mouse. Okay. I I am front perspective. I'm, can I do that in front perspective view? It's not letting me do that. I'm in front ortho. I'll just go to view and change to perspective. It's also oh, ortho versus perspective. I see. Okay, now the the mouse is not letting me rotate. How do I do that? It says front perspective feet. What's going on here? Hmm. Are you just trying to rotate the view? Yeah. Yeah, press the scroll wheel and drag. I'm pressing the scroll wheel and dragging different places. It's not uh, not doing it for me. Scrolling it zooms in and out, but other than that, if I press it, it's not doing that for me. Hmm. That's weird. Okay, so anyway, here the way you um, describe how you drew up the the gasifier shape there. What was the basic process you went through? Just for a quick quick um, tour. I started with a cube. Go to add mm -hmm. mesh cube, and now I just added a cube somewhere. There it is. Mm -hmm. And then it starts out, um, I think, one meter or two meters square, something like that. So then if I were to take this cube and make it into the flat gas fire shape, press the tab, puts you into vertice editing mode. Mm-hmm. I will change the view to top, and I will change the view to ortho. So let's say I want this to be flat. I press the A key, which means select or deselect all, and then I think it's B. Yeah. Yeah, necessary. Mm -hmm. So now I have those four vertices on the side selected. Oh, wait. So basically, you can Blender works on you can select primitive shapes. What if? How do you do things like the tubes that you did? The sculpting ability is really nice in Blender. Oh yeah, okay. Um, so freeform drawing. Well, I'm gonna delete this object. Yeah. All right. So these curvy tubes. Yeah. Um. Let's see where that is. That's not C. It's EGR feed hose. So you drew that freehand, yeah? Sort of. There's two uh, objects under this EGR feed hose mm -hmm. parent object. Yep. There's one that's called air intake, and that's a, a curve. See the curve icon? Yeah. And then there's a hose mesh, which is a mesh icon. So the curve, let's hide this momentarily. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, just like editing the vertices in a cube or any other kind of mesh. You can just drag it. Press the tab key. Hmm. And that takes me into vertice editing mode. So I can click. On a vertice, um, and we'll 
I'll move it, move it way out. Mm. You can see the line changing there. Yeah. Yeah. We'll... Yeah. So you can do that. Uh, let me ask you about the some of the fittings there. Did you pull those in as as library parts, or did you actually draw those? Like for Say example, that again? the fitting, for example, the flange on the gasifier itself. Did you pull that in from a library, or did you just draw that? Uh, I drew the flange and the T's and the elbows. Mm -hmm. Is it pretty easy to import parts from other sources? Like, say, you go to McMaster Car and you want to just imp import a T or something like that, because they have, for example, step files in in McMaster Car. Yes. It's pretty easy to Blender put them in. Blender can import Colladas. Mm -hmm. That's the format that, three, that Google SketchUp 3D Warehouse uses. Collada is 3DS. an open standard. Is that? Pardon? Is Collada the? Is that an open standard? I believe. Yeah, they open pretty well. Open as an open file format. There's still really a bad echo, mm. so sometimes what I can't understand what you're saying. Yeah, no, I was referring to the Collada is an interchange file format for interactive 3D applications. It's actually an open standard XML schema. So yeah, it's actually, Collada is an open source standard. Which is good. Okay. Uh, can, can so there's a few other things you can import. 3DS. Uh -huh. Not sure what FBX is. Import STL, uh -huh. 3DS object, SVG, BVH, ply. Uh huh. Doesn't have step. And if that's not enough, there are some other importers that you can um, install into Blender. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, because cause a step is a very widely accessible format for manufacturers, so it would be nice to have that clearly worked out for Blender so we can just import a bunch of stuff right. into Blender. Can you see this Blender user preferences window? Um, yeah. Probably not because um, probably because I only shared this one window. I, I'm yeah, I'm looking at your screen there. Yeah. Let's see. Is there a way to change what window I'm sharing? Yeah, yeah I think you have to reshare. Just quit out of share, and then I think it let lets you share different windows. So click on share again and then it, you'll be able to. Yeah. Yeah, are we back? Yeah. Oh, do you see a user preferences window? Yeah. not a step importer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have you ever done anything like animations in Blender? Uh, very little. Mm -hmm. um, my boys have done some. Mm -hmm. They're better at it than I am, I think. Does, does Blender handle pretty complex objects? Like, for example, right now with the power cube and a gasifier, are you starting to see any bog down? Or it's still just fast and easy to work with? Uh, it goes pretty fast. Mm -hmm. um, but it does definitely get chunky when you get complicated stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Another powerful feature is the cycles rendering. Uh huh. Let me show that just a little bit yet. Yep. Photo perspective.
Yeah. Mm. Oh, so it's rendering it real time. Oh, wow. So it renders real time. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, great. It um, starts out grainy and then gets finer as you let it go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to do that, let me let me see how I how I would do that. So if I go into view. Toggle quad view, front ortho view. So you want to be in perspective view all the time? It doesn't matter. You can do it in, uh, in ortho or any. Okay. So say I'm in perspective ortho. view. How do, how do I get into the render? Oh, okay. Render. See my screen again? Yep. Choose render in the viewport shading. Render at the bottom. Yeah. I just have the view select object. Let's see. I'm in object mode. I'm not seeing the other other windows for render. I see a what render at the top, render image. see my screen oh wow um, it rendered something here yeah I'm looking at it yep you choose cycles render at the top and then down at the bottom there's uh, you see where my mouse is playing yep you choose rendered and you can choose wireframe it shows it like that or you can choose solid which is what I've been yeah with. no very nice it's taken quite a bit of time here I'm, I'm on the cycles render and it's doing it is doing like a square at a time off the window. Yeah, it's doing a pretty high quality render. It depends how good your video card, I think, and your CPU. You have a, is it a quad core or a, or a dual core computer that you have? I think it's quad core Dell yep. Precision M6500. Yeah. No, it looks, looks good though, the rendering. What version of Blender? Uh, I've got 2.69. Well, you got 2.74. Okay. Is that the latest, or? I think it's the latest. Let's see. I just downloaded that recently. Um, when did you download this? Uh, not sure. Sometime um, after March 31, because <laughs> mm -hmm. that's the date that it shows on the splash screen there. What system are you using? Are you using what operating system? Ubuntu 12. Okay. I'm on Ubuntu 14. Oh, I'm not using the version of Blender that's um, in the package manager. I downloaded the latest one and installed it manually off of blender.org. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, for me here, it's doing a high quality render, but it's going just pretty slowly. It's like one quarter or one third done. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Okay. That's okay. Um, okay. So what are some other things to look at here 
I'll, t I'll take a look. Well, um, what instructionals would you recommend if, you, if someone's learning Blender? Uh, do you have any specific ones or just search on, you, on YouTube or? Uh, look up Andrew Price. Okay. BlenderGuru.org. No, not that. BlenderGuru.com, okay. Yeah. Okay. This guy is really good. So he's um Okay. Very nice. Does this guy is he a uh animation guy or um 3D guy? Mostly um I think computer graphics like photorealism. Yeah. Okay. Have you talked to this guy or? No, I have not personally. Okay. He lives in Japan, but I think he's originally from Australia. Okay. So I have Blender no idea Guru. what time zone he's in. Japanese time zone probably. He does these academies. Yeah. Architecture academy. It's got a good audience on on Facebook. Fifty four thousand. Okay. Yeah, I actually liked them already, so I, I did hear about this from before somewhere. Very nice. Okay, I'll take a look at that. Um, and he's got a bunch of stuff on his website. Podcasts or. Would you recommend their tutorials there? Okay. Yeah, he's got a lot of really good tutorials. Um, Does he have a like a series of um, like from super beginning or is there a particular one? Is there a particular series to that or? Oh uh, boy, I don't know. Okay. How about I've been like using Blender for probably three or four years, mm -hmm. and um, I can't even remember. I can't tell exactly how I started with it. Yeah. Okay. One of the things that I don't like about Blender is that um, it's not really oriented to, to precision. Like, you can't say, I want this uh, thing to be exactly one and a half inches or something. Mm -hmm. um, it's more of a freestyle thing. Mm -hmm. You can snap to the grid and when you first create an object like a mesh, mm -hmm. a cube, or a, or a sphere, or a cylinder, you can tell it exactly what size to be. Yeah. But from there, editing the points are kind of freehand. Yeah. You know, like I was showing you with, let's, well, here, let's try and add a, uh, not what I had in mind. Well, let's add a cylinder. Mm -hmm. The snapping so to... Some, you can snap to things like. well, or you can snap to corners and things. and. Sixteen vertices. 
So there, you see I have the cylinder exactly like I want it. Mm -hmm. But then, maybe I want to make a hole through the middle of it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not really... Yeah, I mean, I think, I think a decent workflow is that you have several tools and you just interoperate between them. There's, I mean, doesn't mean doesn't need there's not a need to make all the functions in in a single piece of soft software. In fact, that's pretty much unrealistic if you're talking about all kinds of different things. So, for example, if you generate like say SDLs and just import them readily through some parametric modeler. And you can get that super precise and easy in another place and just import it here or go between here and FreeCAD or between here and Sweet Home 3D. I think that's exactly. those are acceptable exactly. workflows, yeah. But then then the question becomes not how specifically you draw things, but how do you interoperate? I think that's much more important than being able to master a single tool. It's it's more important to interoperate, have the ability to interface between the different different tools. That's yeah. our approach, yeah. Yeah, I want to learn to use FreeCAD because it mm -hmm. seems pretty powerful as far as making things precisely um, Yeah. a certain size and shape. There's constraints. Yeah, actually, there's... Um, so I do have a FreeCAD base, basic tutorial on architecture from Yorick. Let me just pull it up. Actually, I'll pu up upload this to the wiki right now because I actually meant to do that. Um, FreeCAD for OSC.ODT. There's a pretty decent tutorial of how to... What we want to do is put it into a Google presentation so we can edit that online. It's an ODT right now. Oh wow, my yeah, it's four megabytes. That's fine. I'm gonna upload that right now to um, FreeCAD 101 on a wiki. That's a good if you want to start with precision design. This is from the core developer. It's a tutorial by Yorick. So thank you for the brief introduction on this. And um, so the next steps are, we do wanna, uh, you feel you got a good idea for the, the hearth design? Yeah. To go forward? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, oh. these bolts would come out here. Mm -hmm. And that whole plate would slide out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, slide out and now is there any liner so are we considering so there's the fire brick inside um, which is basic I mean one way to go is that the fire brick brick simply has holes on top which are your apertures and that could work itself but then my question is how do you prevent charcoal from getting in there and just plugging it up is that an issue And if you have a nozzle that's vertical, how do you prevent it from getting clogged up by charcoal? Does it just burn away and then that's it and the ash falls down? So there needs to be though a a place for the ash to collect though, right? I think we probably are missing a little 
door on the bottom where we could put an, a little ash collection? Or were we going to do that from the side? There's the, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would be the ash clean out. And uh, the clinker and the ashes would come out through there. But if the, if the whole thing is full of charcoal, mm -hmm. you have to stick a poker in the, in the air intake and push the charcoal towards the ash clean out. So you get a mixture of charcoal and clinker and ashes out of the ash clean out. How often, how many cycles, how many burn fuel, how many fuel tanks full do you have to clean out the ash? Like every 10 tanks or something, or? Maybe every third or fourth. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sounds good. So that's, that's pretty good. We got the rendering pretty nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. I'll, I'll cut off the video here for the basic tutorial.